Good afternoon YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Case and Power Supplies. I have another charge case to show you, in fact I actually have two, but they're identical, um, so I'll obviously uh, predominantly only go through the details of one, and then obviously give you a fleeting look, or a quick look should I say, at the second one. Uh, basically, these charge cases are going for a UAV company. Um, basically, or should I say a drone racing company actually, but obviously they're still UAV. They're creating a racetrack, an indoor racetrack for RC quads, uh, where you can obviously turn up, uh, pay to obviously book the session kind of thing, and obviously go racing around with the quads. So they obviously need uh, a charging solution to allow the, the batteries to obviously be maintained and charged in between obviously flights. And, and in this case, it's obviously not only going to charge LiPos, but potentially transmitter batteries as well. So they came to me, uh, basically what we've done with these cases, we have gone for the rather excellent Revo Electrics touch chargers uh, because they are, they, they work well kind of thing. And also the main beauty about them is with the bump controller are integral now to the chargers because these units are potentially going to be not necessarily out of eyesight but a little bit further away from where the the main people are going to be they wanted to re retain some form of communication and obviously updating system to monitor how the batteries are charging kind of thing and obviously when they are charged so of course then in this instance the, Re the Revo Electrics with their bump controller and obviously associated app for the iOS and uh, Android users out there fits the bill quite nicely so this, these two cases obviously are built then around River Electric's chargers and will obviously do what they want to do from that. There's obviously going to be some additional uh, fire safety precautions taken into account and as you can probably already see from where I've uh, not held the camera very steady, the charge boards if you like, I've, they're going to be obviously one on either side so we've, the, we've got a pair of charge boards on this side to charge 12 packs on this and then there'll be another one connected to the charge connector on the other side now that they are obviously the connections on the side of the case which is my usual familiar sort of output there AC at the back as normal and uh, charge points here they're obviously wired um, in series actually no tell the line, not series they're actually wired in parallel I had to think about that for a minute they're wired in parallel so they go obviously back to the charger and the charger then just sees the uh, the connected packs as obviously one large 4S pack I think in this instance but obviously of a larger capacity. So what we did, we brought the, the usual XT60 charge port balance boards. Originally I did double side these to the, uh, obviously I created with the CNC, I used a piece of the 10mm polypropylene material that I used for the decks to create kind of like a backbone, backboard if you want to call it that to obviously mount the balance boards onto and originally because there wasn't really needed to be too much work put into this I did obviously use double sided tape but it turned out where the mouldings, the plastic case mouldings for the balance boards themselves weren't exactly flat it was lifting off on each of the corners so I wasn't too happy with sending those out so what I did then in the end was remount each of the panels uh, uh, got transferred the screw mounting holes in CAD so I got the accurate locations and obviously then transferred those then obviously into recessed holes and then obviously through holes at 3mm and then just employed some slightly longer self tapping screws then to essentially bolt or secure screw the balance boards then to these backboards in the original screw locations and that's worked out quite nice and then of course then I've put some little rubber feet on there as well just to stop the board sliding around on the plain plastic so when it's down yeah they're less likely to slide around which is quite handy and obviously there's because there's two cases there's obviously four of these that are produced so a pair for each case and the other one is on this side obviously I've left it disconnected so if I go to that one you can see obviously where it'll plug in we can obviously go up to the 6S uh, uh, LiPos if need be because obviously you've got the uh, 7S or 7-pin JSTXH connectors there, so the PL6, yeah, I think they're a PL6 from memory, can obviously be used 
um, to its full potential if need be. So, laser etched logo on the front, just finishes it off. So without further ado, because I'm not spending too long on this because I've got other jobs to get onto, let me open the lid. As you can see, very minimalist this one. We're not, uh, we're not obviously looking for anything flash on this. It just has to be reliable and functional. So as per normal, let me go across again. We've got my usual radial fans there, the 9733 radial fans. Again, you can hear them obviously out with the air. They do shift an awful lot of air. In fact, when you cover, when you cover the slots with my arm and my hand across the front there, the air inlet slots, you can actually feel the air being sucked in. It's quite good. So, you know, there's very little chance in of obviously the charger and the power supplies that are obviously inside this, contained within this lower half of the case, getting too warm. So that's quite good. So usual fans across the back, and then also the 3D printed um, grills there, which again, obviously sub flashes normally we've seen from my other videos. I did put in the twin charge USB charge port at the back. Wasn't necessarily a requirement, but because I knew there is going to be tablets working with this, uh, with these charging setups, I thought that if they wanted to, if the customer wanted to, they could leave the tablet in the lid and obviously connected it so it's charging. So when it's here, it's charging, and when they want to walk away a little bit, put a little bit of distance between them and the chargers, they can obviously then disconnect it and take the tablet with them. We've got the PL6 in the middle here. It's pretty much it, it, the charger itself is slap banging in the middle, which of course then puts the touchscreen slightly off center. The only difference we've got here, of course, is then obviously it's all mounted and flushed to the back of the, the charge case as per normal, which you've seen in other videos. I finally had some bump zone stickers printed and cut for me. So that, in my eyes, I'll see, yeah, trying to get out my light, you can see it just makes, it finishes off the case, if you like. It's something I've wanted to have done for some time. I haven't. Uh, a future charge case build that I've got coming up shortly a very couple of very big ones admittedly they were gonna they will benefit from something like this as well um, so it it just filtered down nicely with these cases so I got I've created got a nice contact now who can do the printed vinyl graphics because I can't I can only do the the simple uh, single color cut graphics or, or lay various layers out because I don't have a print cutter machine so this is quite nice I've done the overall design of what I wanted I didn't. I couldn't replicate the the carbony sort of look background, but the chap managed to do that for me, and that's turned out quite nice. So again, we've got the typical air slots along the front. So air in, pass the chargers, pass the pass and pass and through the charger, should I say, into the radial fans, and obviously out the case. So it keeps the cooling airflow quite nice, which is quite good there. So not a lot else really to show on that one. Hence, rather quick video as such, just to go through it quickly. Um, the only other thing that's worth noting, again, following on from meeting of this chap here that done this for me, is the logo in the lid. You will see at the end of this video, I've, I took some photographs of one I created, again with my just simple vinyl cutter, if you like. But because this logo has a couple of different colours to it, again, I thought it was worth spending that little bit extra just to put that little finishing touch onto it. So both cases have now got the fitted printed vinyl printed logo and it looks great just finishes it off nicely back off a bit and you can see slightly smaller case as well perhaps I should have said on this one still the max uh, line of case but I think this is the max 465 off the top of my head as well as usually the popular one is the 505 which is a little bit wider but not so deep this one's a little bit of a deeper case and there was method for this because originally we were thinking we may go for the Reeve Electrics power supply that they do as well but I don't think we get hold of those from memory there wasn't any in the country at the time so we reverted back to my server power supplies and uh, that'll see him quite well with this so that's that one and obviously then I can, you can close the lid and then if I quickly pan over we've got the second one here because I'm just about to literally pop these into the cardboard box weigh them get the measurements so I can get the there we go so I can obviously get them picked up by the courier this week and obviously delivered and out to the customer. This one's obviously without the charger. The customer um, and indeed the, the middleman that's obviously dealing with other sections of their pro project, if you like, um, they really hadn't had the chance to play around with the Revo Electric's charger. So I said, well, realistically, 
I only need one, which I can use to double check the fitment um, in obviously the CNC deck. So I've got the one and the other one is obviously waiting then for the charger to be fitted into the charge case on delivery. The good thing about that is as well, it also allows the customer to see how I've got everything mounted within the case and also then later down the line if there is needed to be any maintenance on the, the charge case itself, they know where they're going. It's just a, it is just simply a case of obviously removing the outer securing screws, holding the deck in place, lift the lid, disconnect um, the, the couple of connections there also into the, a, the front of the charger and you'll see I created 3D printed holders which are mounted to the underside to this sort of area here which gives me the twin output for XT60s so obviously then you can connect the outputs then from this side into the XT60 and the output from this side into the second XT60 and likewise then next to it as well there's obviously um, a, a parallel, a, a very simple parallel JST X8 7 pin connector setup that I've made um, again in a 3D printed holder which is obviously then secured then to the bottom here as well so again the balance extension leads that I've got running to the outside here then just come up loop up and obviously then plug in onto the underside of the deck so very simple very easy to main, maintain on their own if need be um, and of course then the power supplies I have my quick release edge connector power edge connector on the front of them so should one of those go down in time and need to be replaced it's a simple case to slide the connector on slide the duff power supply out slide a new one in and push the connector back on the front and away they go again but anyway, not much more to go through on this one, so I'm not going to keep you here any much longer. Um, thanks for watching again. Please like, subscribe and share. You know where I am if you need any charge cases built. And I'll look forward to showing you the next one. Um, the one, actually there's three of them. They're, they're going to be three identical units. I'll give you a little bit of a teaser at the moment. They are going to have uh, three Revo Electrics PL8 Duo Touch chargers in them. They are currently en route. Uh, a 48 volt power supply per charger and in a server racking sort of affair actually I can show you the charging boards that uh, Steve Smith XY Gax my electronics man behind the ice meter and all the other little fancy little electronic gizmos that <laughs> I can give him tell him what I want to achieve but I don't know how to do it myself and he comes up with it and this is it this is going to be the charge boards on the next charge case build so we have eight batteries in total, but the board is split into two. So we're going to have four on this side, four on that side. And the idea is then channel one of the PL8 Duo is going to control that four. And channel two is going to be controlling that four. But there's going to be two of these boards, one above each other. So there's going to be uh, eight batteries charged in parallel on each channel, if you like. Again, I think 4S, 4200 milliamp hours or 44 but the beauty about this, we've also got the XT60. Let me zoom over to this side because I've got one mounted in there already but not, not sold it in. So we've got an XT60 for the main charge port. There's, as you can see there, there's fuses. So the, uh, the positive and negative of that XT60 is going to be fused. On this side then, you've got the JST XH5 pin. We're only going obviously to, up to the 4S. So that's there. And then on the back of this board, we've got put provisions there then for the resettable uh, SMT uh, surface mount resettable polyfuses. So there's going to be fused protection on both the positive and negative and each of the balance pins and that's typical across the entire board. And then we come across to the middle where obviously then that will be the connections to the charger and obviously then the balance connection point as well. And then the other side as well it's all protected. So going to be a very very nice build. Can't wait to show you all. Take care of yourself, stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.